Okay, so I can't help but notice uh, that I've got the first slot after lunch when everybody's settling into their seats, digesting things, checking their email. I will take that as a uh, sign of extreme confidence uh, on the part of Jeff and the rest of the organizers. My name is George Pachi. I work for a company called Excella, and this talk is, it's a central nervous system, not a logging tool. This is kind of like having a mystery novel and titling it, The Butler Did It. Um, but there's only so much suspense I'm going to generate in five minutes in front of you anyway. So any biology majors in the audience? No? OK, so I'm relatively safe. So I'm going to tell you a story about evolution and, uh, of life and about evolution of logging systems. So life started with prokaryotes. They're a single cell. They don't have a nucleus. They're very simple. Similarly, over on the logging side, we're talking the 80s here, we had applications. They ran on a single machine. They didn't talk to any other machines. If you got logs from an application, they went in random directories, and you were never quite sure what would be in them. Some people tried to add structure to them. Other people didn't bother. So the next step in life was eukaryotes. Sorry, typo. Uh, they were also a single cell, but they had a nucleus. Um, and that turns out to be a big deal uh, in terms of being able to live your life as a single-celled organism. On logs, we were still on a single machine, right? so still like a single cell. Um, but now we had the ability to put them in well-defined system log files. So logs that all had to do with networking could go in one file. Logs had to do with another thing could go in another file. Next step up was not quite animals the way we think of animals. It was colony metazoans. Um, it was cells that kind of got together and cooperated. So like a jellyfish would be an example of this. It doesn't have a nervous system or anything, but the cells can kind of signal to each other and sometimes act in concert. Over on the logging side, well, we had logs getting shipped to a central logging server. You had multiple machines kind of working together, at least to send the signals together. Next big step, at least in my opinion, um, was chordates. So we got a spine. Um, and now signals could go from one part of the body to another. Right? They just had to make it to this spine, to this little central nerve, and then they could travel where they needed to travel. Uh, in logs, standardized networking helped a, a great deal. You used to have no networking, then you used to have putting things together with modem cables, and then you used to have all kinds of different vendor things. But as things got more standardized and we got more towards uh, everybody using TCP IP, everything got better. So then we got higher vertebrates. So there are some chordates who are not terribly bright, right? But you got a swelling, a, a bunch of nerve cells together at the end of the spinal cord, and that eventually turned into a brain. Uh, so you can take signals from the same event, you can correlate, you can put them together, you can, you can make better use of the information. Uh, in logs, we got structured logging. Um, so you have your logs from multiple places, you can interpret them all with one piece of software and correlate them better. Um, then we got big brains, uh, which basically is just us and maybe elephants and whales. Um, now we can use that information that we've put together, that we correlated, to model things and predict things. And with the rise of logging tools like Splunk or like New Relic or like Elasticsearch, um, we can now use that information that, that we can correlate now and that we have centralized to model things, to predict things. There's still a couple of gaps, right? I mean, logging has only had like 50 years. Uh, evolution's had, I don't know, a couple of billion. Um, so in, in humans, we can use information to take action and to guide that action. Over on the logging side, well, you know, we're, we're kind of taking some first steps there, and I'll talk about those in a minute. I mean, I only have a minute, so clearly if I'm going to talk about them, it'll be in a minute. Right, uh, and then with humans, we can have information about the future, which is weird, right? But when people tell you, I'm gonna do this Monday, well, that's information about the future. It's not perfect the way information about the recent past is, but it's there, and we can use it to make plans, right? Uh, again, on the logging tool side, um, you know, the, I don't see a lot of uh, using information about the future, or even having information about the future in the logs. Uh, so we can't use it to plan. So I'm going to close with some ideas of some next steps that we can take, like you can take now when you go back to work tomorrow. Um, as for information about the future, you can actually start putting information about the future into your logs. Like if you have a planned outage for a system, you can add an event to your logs and say, look, I added this event on Monday, but on Friday, we expect an outage from 6 to 10. 
Um, similarly, you can get action by taking advantage of the monitoring and alerts to either make humans act, send them an email, create a ticket. I know places where nothing happens without a ticket. Um, and uh, you can also take very, very simple, low-risk, automated steps with those. So thanks. I hope I've given you a new way to think about what used to be logging systems and are now central nervous systems.